Permobile, why did you do this? What What is with these plastics? Like, Velcro, really? Ugh. back to the face of the sun or where the walls are sort of like that. Anyways, today we're gonna do a couple different things. I've got my 2021 F3 right here. There it is. And this last week I took it to the beach with a friend and went running around in the sand. Which, by the way, in the slightly damp, hard packed sand, these aggressive tread tires do excellent. But now we have to clean the thing. There was really strange weather there. There was kind of this fog or mist or something like that and basically sat out on the beach for like three hours getting blasted by this highly corrosive spray from the ocean enough so that when my back was to the wind the backs of my arms started getting damp and I noticed the next day that when I start reclining in this thing that it's not operating very smoothly so what we're gonna do is clean this thing up but before we get to that there's something that needs to be repaired by the way, I am using what I call the steampunk chair here for this. So in the live stream on Thursday, someone had mentioned that this broke off the front of their chair, which was funny because it broke off on my chair that morning as well. So I think the problem is, well, here, I'll show you. This piece goes on here and it's sort of a fascia thing that hides some of this stuff or maybe also helps from getting pinched, I don't know. But as the legs go up and down, this thing is supposed to rotate. But depending on the type of cushion you have, this is a ride forward by the way, it kind of gets jammed up. And when your legs are up, it can get kind of stuck under your cushion like this. Then when you go back down, it may not flip down and your legs can potentially push on this or put different loads or things on it. Anyways, I'm finding with the newer permobiles, the plastics they're using leave quite a bit to be desired. Not a huge fan of that, but anyways. These little clips right here are what start to break. If we look at the other side, this one actually broke a few months ago. You can see that we're missing one of these tabs here. Now this was broken and I just kind of left it be. I was like, eh, I'll probably wait till it breaks off the rest of the way and then I think I have an idea for fixing it. On the other side, you can see there's kind of a stress crack here. And I'm pretty sure if I push on this, yeah, see, it just broke off. By the way, Permobile, if you're watching this, um, I know you like my non-branded nature or whatever, but I have no problem consulting with manufacturers for things like this and problems that could be fixed easily and lots of suggestions. And for that matter, I don't know if you guys do, but please check with wheelchair users when you design something or change something. Um, we have a lot of really useful information since we usually spend 18 hours a day in these things. I like the product, but these plastics, yeah, this we're, we're not moving in the right direction here. So I think what we're gonna do is use zip ties, cause why not, right? If you notice here, there's a round bar that these attach to. You can see right here where that's supposed to clip on and just to rely on the frictile forces of that plastic not to break. And it goes on each side just like that. So what we're gonna do, see we still need this thing to pivot, but we need it to not break off. So my thought is, we are basically going to just drill two small holes, probably one up here and another one down here. And then we're gonna thread a zip tie through around this little rod right here. Uh, by the way, these just come right off. This is part of the uh, leg rest mechanism here. But basically, yeah, we'll just drill a couple holes here right next to where these are and thread a zip tie through. And I think that'll take care of it. And yes, I'm drilling holes in my chair, but I don't really care. I want this piece to be on here because I don't want to get pinched by this stuff or, you know, there's things here that can poke your legs, especially in hot weather. I mean, especially in hot weather. I mean, I'm wearing jeans right now, but I have shorts and things like that on and I don't need to get scratched up by this. So anyways, let me grab the drill and let's get started. Oh, and also in case I haven't mentioned it yet, I don't remember because I have a very short memory. Um, we're going to be cleaning this thing as well. You can see here all of the sand and stuff. I've got, most of the sand has kind of worked its way out but there is a lot of dirt and debris and stuff on here. 
And we're going to be taking the backrest off as well and cleaning and lubricating all of this stuff because, yeah, that corrosive spray is just not something you want to leave unchecked. All right, here's my workbench. This is the Austin Air Purifier, which I'm actually going to be taking back with me to the bus because Oregon and California are on fire again, and this thing um, is really good at dealing with smoke. So, anyways, we're going to use this as our little workbench for now. But this should be pretty simple. We've got the uh, Kryobi tools here, and we're going to use the drill that was purchased by someone on the Amazon wish list. Oh, you know who you are, by the way. Um, also, to make this video, I was actually going to buy some stuff, but I stopped by the mailbox on the way here, and someone sent me exactly what I needed. Hang on a second. Ta-da! DuPont silicone uh, spray. This is what we're going to use to lubricate the stuff on the back of the chair. This is what I recommend. I'll put a link to, or an Amazon affiliate link to this down below. Doesn't cost you anything extra, but I get a few cents from the sale. The zip ties I like are made by TR Industrial. I use these for almost everything. And basically all we're gonna do is drill a hole that is just big enough for a zip tie to slip through, which in this case, I think we're gonna go with 13 sixteenths. Um, I want it to have a tiny bit of friction going through there. So this is slightly smaller than the zip tie. And we're just gonna YOLO this. I, uh, I could measure stuff out and do a whole bunch of like math and mark things and all that. But the way I like to do stuff is kind of side of the road repairs. And we're just going to do this. Actually, let's check one thing real quick. Before we get too crazy drilling holes in my chair, I want to verify we're doing this in the right spot. So you can see our clips are right here and right here, and they go on just this side of these little bearing mounting surfaces here. So I think what we're going to do is put our holes just on the outside of these. And yeah, that should take care of it. And that bar basically goes right through here. So to allow this to still rotate, what I'm going to do is drill one of the holes up here on this section and the other one down here. That way it's a pretty loose angle, or we have a, a pretty wide... How do I explain this? If the zip tie is going around like this, it's going to be really tight and make it hard for this thing to rotate. So I want the curve of it to be more like this. All we need to do is provide some clamping force to hold this onto the chair. So it doesn't need to very tightly fit that bar. It basically just needs to add a little bit of pressure pulling this thing backwards. So it doesn't need to be super tight. In other words, these holes are going to be pretty far apart from each other. Now I'm going to drill this from the front because I found with this type of plastic, you usually get a better um, hole in the front. I don't know, this stuff doesn't usually crack. It drills pretty, pretty nice. So anyways, we're going to drill this pretty close to the front edge here. Just enough room so that the plastic shouldn't crack. There we go. And you can see our zip tie just fits through there. And then the next one, we're gonna go down here pretty low. And I'm gonna do this one from the back because I can see where I want it. Now there you can see I drilled from the back and we've got some little stuff sticking out here from the front. Not the end of the world, but you know, and something that your legs are gonna be rubbing on, it's usually good to um, not have little pokey things. So I'm just gonna take another drill bit here by hand and use this to just gently cut that off. There we go. Actually probably wouldn't hurt to do it to this one too. There we go. That just kind of bevels our edges a little bit. I should probably be using a larger drill bit to bevel these edges, but whatever. You can see the surface finish there is not the best thing in the world, but I don't really care. I want it to be functional and it's going to be covered by a zip tie anyways. Okay. So it looks like our holes here should be good. They're not super ideal because of the angle, but I mean, I think this will work. Now, because your leg is going to be down here, you want the end of this to be underneath. So I'm going to feed my zip ties through from the back. Actually, let's do it this way. And then that will allow the sharp tails that we cut off 
to be hidden underneath here and along a long ways away from my legs. Okay, there we go. Now we can poke these so they're down underneath there. Reach underneath. And tighten them both up slowly. Now you don't want to go too incredibly tight on this because again, we need this to still rotate. And also there's nothing supporting that. So if you go really tight, it's, it's going to bend this plastic like that and it's preferable not to do that. I mean, in theory, we could have gone around this middle part, but as you can see, there's no clearance right here, and there is over here. So, that's probably a little bit tighter than I want, but I think it'll still be all right. There we go. Now they're both on there. Let me grab some side cutters and we'll clip off the uh, little tails of professionalism. So that's kind of an inside joke uh, with a friend of mine. It's always like, well, if you clip off the zip tie tails, it makes everything, wow, these are not very sharp. It makes your job that much more professional looking. So we always talk about professionalism as sort of a, a joke, especially when you're using zip ties to repair a $41,000 chair. And there we go. We have our zip ties installed. As you can see, they're not too terrible looking. They just go right around here and there's nothing sharp. And as you lift your leg rests up, it will push this up. Like I said, it is a little bit tighter than it was stock. So as I lower my legs back down, especially with the cushion on there, because it's gonna be pushing down on this, I'll have to make sure I reach down and push this down every time I lower my legs back down. But this is not coming off of here. So there we go, repaired. Oh, and one quick procedural thing. I didn't put these back on before I put this on there. This piece technically has to be removed to get these back on because they, they slip over this bar and then push in right here. But if you just flip this up, you can kind of put that bar in this top channel here like that. And then there's just enough room to get those pushed back into place. There we go. And now it is time to move on to cleaning this thing up, which is absolutely disgusting. <laughs> One of the reasons I came out to the warehouse to do this is because I have my full size air compressor here. So what I'm gonna do first is I've got this set to a lower pressure. Well, actually I've probably got it set to about 80 PSI. I would recommend being very careful with that pressure and wearing safety glasses and also be careful where you point this. There's a lot of stuff on the chair, once again, these plastics, um, that can be ripped off with air that is too high of pressure. So I'm gonna set the camera down and we're gonna clean this thing off real quick. By the way, this is just a preliminary dusting. We're gonna go through and actually clean this as well. Okay, now on my chair here, I use the direct backrest adapter. So removing the backrest is super easy. Um, all I have to do is pull this little latch and then lift up. And the whole thing just comes right off. Now the main thing here that I wanna make sure I clean on this is this mechanism right here. This slides up and down as the chair reclines. And there's some little tracks in here that this mechanism slides up and down on. So we're gonna to wanna to make sure we get all this cleaned out and then also I'm gonna get some silicone lube down here in these tracks. But you can see even though we've blown the thing off, there's still a pretty significant amount of dust back here. Now what I'm using to clean this here are these Purell hand wipes. They're supposedly hand sanitizing, but these are skin safe and they don't really leave a residue. These I like a little bit better than the Lysol wipes because those tend to leave kind of some sludge behind. So 
So I'm just gonna wipe all this down real quick. Then I'm tilting the chair back here just a little bit. And you can see as I'm doing this, it's exposing more area where there's dirt. Now dust and dirt can pretty easily get in here on a daily basis and it's not really a big deal necessarily. But in this case, since it was saltwater spray from the ocean, that's why I'm taking the extra care to go through here and make sure we displace all of that. Well, at least get it cleaned up and then also displace it with some silicone lube. All right, cool. I think that should be good. I'm gonna lean it back here just a little bit and then we're gonna use the air compressor just to dry off what little bit of that stuff is left in there. And once again, I apologize for the lighting exposure issues in here. I still need to go through and do something with this warehouse as far as painting the walls and all that. I know I say it every time I film something out here, but um, I guess I've just got other priorities at the moment. Okay, what we're gonna do is just spray a little bit of this in those tracks and then run it back and forth a few times just to make sure that all of this stuff gets evenly dispersed down in here. Now we don't wanna leave a huge amount of it in there. Uh, this is just basically to make sure any of that salt water stuff gets um, displaced. Okay, and then immediately after spraying that, we're going to run it back and forth a couple of times. I'm gonna spray just a little bit more down in there. Again, you don't wanna to go too nuts with this because this stuff will run and go all over the place and make a mess. And if you've got a bunch of this stuff dripping and puddling everywhere, it's gonna attract a bunch of dirt. And then there's a couple other points here that I wanna get some lubrication into as well. This is where the armrest connects and actually pivots up and down. There's a little spring mechanism and a ball detent down in here. And I just wanna make sure we get some of this stuff down in there. So once again, just a tiny bit. Then we'll just work that up and down a little bit. And then the little part here where it connects, same thing there. That I'm actually gonna have to wipe off because it's hard to get it in there without it running all over the place. And then a little bit right here as well. Okay, that was way too much. Okay, there we go. Now these are all areas that don't normally need attention or regular lubrication, typically from what I've found, but simply because once again, we were at the beach and we got all that salt spray in there. Um, that's why I'm going over all this. So there's a couple of spots here. This is the arm that handles the shear reduction or rather this plate that slides up and down. This angle here changes as you recline the chair and this arm goes up and down. So I'm gonna hit all of these little points right here and make sure they have some of this in there. Ah, once again, way too much. It's really hard to be super pinpoint accurate with these things. There we go. And then down here, we've got a couple more pivot points. Same thing, just a little tiny bit. And keep your rag handy because, uh, yeah, real easy to overspray. And now that we're tilted back here, I can double check and make sure we've cleaned up all of our excess silicone here. And now we've moved on to the floor here. You've seen me do this dozens of times, but uh, I'm just basically gonna go around and wipe off all the plastics. One interesting thing that happened though, as I was out running around, I thought I would go onto the grass to kind of clean off my tires, which helped quite a bit. But one of my caster wheels got sideways like this on a big lip I was trying to get up over. And when that happens, this thing can't rotate. So the chair just pulls that way. And what happened was it pulled the tire away from the wheel just enough to make a gap there. And you can see there's all this grass that got in there. So it basically opened that gap 
and then I pulled forward into the grass and oh, sand falling out. But it opened up a little gap there and allowed a bunch of grass and other stuff to get down in here. Yeah, I don't know if you can see that. See, there's sand falling out. Uh, okay, well, I'm not gonna do it today because I don't have the energy, but what I should actually do here is completely remove this wheel and then take apart the tire from the wheel and get all that stuff out of there. I'm probably gonna do that at a later time. Yeah, see, every time I do that, more sand comes out. Um, so that's something I should do, but once again, I'm not going to today because I don't have the energy right now to do it. It's not a huge deal. I am gonna put a little bit of silicone lube in the, the bearing surface back here. But uh, yeah, for now, we'll probably just call that good. And as you can see, we've got a few scratches and war wounds from running around on the bus and other places, but somehow these fenders are still attached. I just assumed that these were gonna snap off almost instantly and um, I would not have fenders, but somehow they've survived. Even with these giant F5 tires on here, I'm absolutely amazed. So once again, I'm just gonna leave them on until they actually snap off. And it's been almost a year now. So I think at this point, if they do snap off, I might just replace them. One technique I like to use with this area right here is the flossing method. You take your cleaning cloth and just kind of do one of these. And that'll get all of the garbage, there you can see, that's around in those, uh, the bearing caps basically. It'll get that out of there. All right, cool. Well, I'm just gonna go ahead and clean a bunch of these plastics. Again, you've seen me do it millions of times. So if there's something that comes up that I think I need to mention, I will do that. But if not, I will be back once this thing is clean. Something I'm noticing back here as I'm cleaning this, there's not a whole lot of light, so it's hard to see. But if you look right here, you can see some scratches on the back cover on this thing. And then right here as well. What's happening is, I don't know if it's because of these larger tires, but these rear uh, fenders actually interfere with the back cover. See that? See how they just touch? And same on the other side. This side's not quite as bad, but once I'm sitting in the chair, they actually scratch right there. I'm assuming that's because I ordered this with the aggressive tread tires, and they're a little bit bigger, and they had to adjust the fenders to fit, but Interesting note, if you do get one of these chairs with these tires, this is probably going to interfere a little bit. And by the way, these, uh, I've had a few people tell me, oh hey, your tires are starting to get bald. Actually, these aggressive tread tires, I'll see if I can find a picture of them when they're brand new. They really don't have that much tread on the rear casters. So, I do have about uh, maybe 350 miles on this chair. But this is actually kind of what they look like. And there isn't really that much wear on there. I just discovered something about the seat lift mechanism. So we have these little tracks here and there's some rollers inside. But I didn't realize the way this actually worked. We've got these little brass colored fittings in here with a split down the middle. But what they're doing is they have two rails, one on the bottom and one here. And what's happening is one is kind of being forced up and the other is being forced down. Take a look right here as I lift the seat elevator and hopefully you can see those two wheels are turning opposite directions. Huh, I was not sure how that worked or ever really looked at it, but yeah, that is super interesting. So I went ahead and blew all those out too, and I've added some silicone lube to all of these sections here because, well, obviously we have counter-rotating things on a shaft. I don't know if there's bearings in there. I'm assuming they're just sort of like a brass or, I don't think they're oil light, but uh, yeah, I went ahead and added a little bit of that silicone lube down in there between all those sections. If we get in real close, you might be able to see there's a little split between the two where they counter-rotate. You can kind of see it right down there. There we go. There you can see those two wheels counter rotating. There's a little bit of dirt in there I need to clean off still. Yeah, interesting note. So that's definitely one section 
that you want to pay attention to when it comes to dirt and cleaning your chair. And you can see there's a kind of a bunch of garbage down in here as well. I'm not sure what the actual maintenance um, recommendation would be for that if you're supposed to oil them or whatever. But uh, yeah, I've I found that this silicone lube stuff is pretty safe to use on most things. Just spray it on and then wipe it up when you're done. And again, I could be completely wrong here. Maybe lubricating these is a really bad idea. This is just what I'm doing. So anyways, if it does wind up causing problems later on, I will let you guys know. But for right now, it just makes sense in my mind that, um, yeah, it'd be good to have something in there other than sand and or nothing. All right, well, I think at this point we are pretty good there's nothing else I think I need to hit, and chair is relatively clean, so I think we're gonna call that good. I'm gonna just look over a few more things here and then uh, clean up a few spots that I missed here and there, and uh, we'll hop back in it and see what's next. All right, remember what I was talking about earlier? You don't wanna use too much of this stuff. You can see now our silicone has kind of made its way down here after sitting for a few hours. So I'm just gonna wipe that off with a rag. And it is perfectly normal for, for this thing to be kind of loose. That's just sort of how they are. A lot of things I've found on permobile chairs are kind of reliant on the user sitting in the chair to hold things in place. Like, I'm sure you've seen the leg rests. They kind of do this. That actually doesn't bother me though because even though it wiggles, it's actually really solid. And what that does is it allows for some things to move without actually breaking. A lot of times if you bump into something or run into something, if everything is crazy rigid, parts will just snap. So having this stuff a little bit loose and some things like the backrest and whatnot, um, I'm actually not too concerned about that. Anyways, um, it's getting hot in here now, so I am going to get this put back together and we're gonna get out of here. And there we go. Nice, shiny, cleaned up chair. Other than the tire tread itself, which I'm not going to clean because that'll instantly get dirty. But yeah, we got everything all cleaned up, lubricated, and the back is moving nice and smoothly now. So I feel a lot better about hopping back in this thing and continuing my life. Oh, <laughs> by the way, I don't care how careful you are. If you are full time in a rehab chair and you're like the carefulest person in the world, you're still going to get marks like this. It is 100% impossible to use one of these chairs daily and avoid bumping into something at some point. So stuff like this, I mean, I think this is just paint. This could probably just be scratched off. I don't even mind touching up stuff with a Sharpie, but honestly, it doesn't bug me that much. Just, just realize that if you use a chair, everyone has the same thing happen. You're gonna bump into stuff. It's just gonna happen. That That's how it is. So, I mean, obviously when you get a new thing, like a new phone, it's like, oh, I'm being really careful with this because, you know, I don't want to damage it or whatever. But at some point the shine will be off it and it'll just be like a thing that you use. I mean, obviously I'm not saying to abuse your chair, but uh, don't feel bad if you do get a few dings and scratches and things here and there because that's just what happens. And I mean, even like on your anti-tippers and stuff, I think getting it on and off of ramps We'll kind of chew these up. Oh wow, that's a big chunk right there. Wonder what that was from. Huh, anyways. But yeah, I've had this thing about a year now and it's been holding up pretty good. Um, yeah, anyways, um, if you do go to the beach, the aggressive tread tires are where it's at. I'm pretty sure if I was using standard power chair tires, I would not have been able to get anywhere. Now granted, you do still have to be really careful and not change direction suddenly, not accelerate too hard, otherwise you just dig in and sink. Yeah, I don't know what's up with the weather down here. It's like clouds and I don't think the background has finished rendering. What's going on over here? Look for that rock there. Oh, there's a rock. Oh, I'm trying to get stuck. There we go. I need to pay attention and remember I'm on sand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oop. 
I ventured. Huh? Yeah, I know. I gotta, gotta remember my caster angle. There we go. I have to consciously remember that this is sand <laughs> and drive accordingly. But I'm gonna link that video that I call the concept of caster control. I'm gonna link that in up above and down below. If you haven't seen that, take a watch. It's really interesting. It's something that I came across that I didn't realize, but in the back of your mind, you need to kind of envision where these caster wheels are pointed, and it makes a huge difference when you're running around in grass or sand. I don't recommend sand, but if you are, gravel, things like that. So check out that video, it's actually pretty helpful. Anyways, I'm gonna get the air compressor shut off, get the tank drained, uh, get all my stuff gathered up and get out of here. It's, uh, the weather has finally broken a little bit. It's, well, I think it's supposed to be like high 80s today, but it's about three in the afternoon right now and I can tell it's a little bit warm. So anyways, I will catch you guys back at the bus. All right, well, there we go, I've made it back. Anyways, I just wanted to make this video and show you what I do in this particular scenario. I'm not saying you constantly need to take apart your chair and lubricate all this stuff and whatnot, but in my case, because I was at the beach and knowing how mechanical things are and the sort of different kinds of metals when they meet salt water and things like that, I just really wanted to make sure that I took everything apart and yeah. got it completely taken care of. Discord noises, as always. So anyways, there you go. That's kind of a look into what I do after running around at the beach, which actually doesn't happen that often, but whatever. I'm rambling. All right, well, I'll catch you guys in a couple of days. Thanks for hanging out. Bugs flying around. <laughs>